Hi, good morning. I am Eileen Fong, an assistant professor at the School of Material Science and Engineering at NTU. Today, it is my pleasure to introduce to you Professor Carl Barry Sharpless, our keynote speaker for today. Professor Sharpless is the W.M. Keck Professor of Chemistry at the Scripps Research Institute in California. A prolific researcher in chemistry, Professor Sharpless is passionate about finding new useful methods for chemistry. His imagination and vision led him to discover a series of reactions for the selective oxidation of olefins. His achievements have won him the Nobel Prize in chemistry in 2001. Since olefins are one of the cheapest functionalized organic starting materials, these, his discovery has profound and widespread impact on academic and industrial chemistry. Professor Sharpless' current research focuses on click chemistry, his new synthetic stratagem for rapid discovery of chemical function. May we now invite Professor Sharpless on stage to share with us on how click chemistry has found new uses in biomedicine. Professor Sharpless, please. Thank you very much for kind words. I, I'm very glad to be here. I, Oh, that uh, Beryl Anderson, Ben Norton especially, who's been my friend since well, uh, quite a while back. And uh, he likes trips to nice places, and he also is a sailor. But he doesn't take much time as he should do in that, I think. Because uh, you can think out there, you know. And uh, I like to be alone when I'm thinking. I can only think then. I'm distracted very easily. So I'm, I hope I can get uh, through this. Uh, presentation. Uh, it's going to be a little problem because my, I gave up on PowerPoint, which I had everything on. I went to Keynote. It's just about killing me. Where's my glasses? Okay. Anyway, uh, I'm going to give up forever on PowerPoint. That's, they've had it with me because this is just unbelievable. Especially maybe it's a lion upgrade. I don't know what it is, but it's no fun. And you'll, you, and we're getting viruses now too. I think this world is melding too close in the computer business. We ought to stay with a strict border in between. Um, that, oh, no, no, we have to get rid of the border. Obviously, that's what's the problem. Okay, this yesterday. I mean, with uh, uh, Greg Vent, Venter here, especially beautiful uh, uh, front high end work in, what, what could be done with, with our input into DNA technology, our, our, our very large input, but a very large little input, really, because we're such blunt objects, really. Everything has to be done to remove, and we can't see the things that we work with. And when you think about it, everything we do is intentional with vision, usually, or sound or touch, but, you, you know, chemistry is just... Use your hands, use muscles. There's nothing else going on except the brain is instructing the muscles. And so that's Avogadro's number uh, in 20 times there, 30 times. And uh, it's probably, uh, to, you know, it's a solvent. I throw in a catalyst. I think, am I in control of this? I don't think so. It's, a t it's statistical mechanics. We just have to realize that the world exists at our scale temporal and spatially removed from the other scale. We're about 10 to the ninth times slower than, than enzymes doing their job. And when they do their job in those little in their minus ninth bits, if, you look, if they could see us and they watch us blink, the blink takes about a third of a second or so, if they could see that, it would take over a year, I roughly calculate, for us to blink. So now I'm going to show you a movie that shows a slowed down version of a cartoon of DNA replication. It's, it's, you can get it yourself off the web, and I, there's some lousy copies out there, but if you go right to the Walter and Eliza uh, Institute, uh, you'll, you, you'll get, uh, oops, yeah, you'll get the best uh, version of it. It's really much better than the ones I had before. And many people, even Shikhanova and Herskovitz, didn't know about this. I saw a year ago, two years ago in China, and they, said, they came running up. They wanted it, of course, because it's their world. But I think most of you have seen it by now. So what I want to do is start it off, and I'll try to go through to the, uh, yeah, I'll go through to, the 
In this animation, we'll see the remarkable way our DNA is tightly packed up so that six feet of this long molecule fits into the microscopic nucleus of every cell. The process starts when DNA is wrapped around special protein molecules called histones. The combined loop of DNA and protein is called a nucleosome. Next, the nucleosomes are packaged into a thread. The end result is a fiber known as chromatin. It's, I know it's interesting, I'm going to skip this part now. This fiber is then looped uh, and coiled it goes again. Through another part here, that's part which is real. False. It's a uh, mic electron microscopy of a of a metaphase of a dividing cell. That's the only real thing in the video. See, there they go. To, now here is the part which I, I think is very disturbing for a chemist <laughs> to see, and it's slowed down as she'll say many times, uh, so that we can see it. We only parse about 22 frames a second. Essentially, the world's a it's a moving picture for us. And, and, and then you'll see things are really complicated for the other strand. This is polymerase, and it, I mean, rep, it's a helicase. It's making another copy of DNA, double-stranded DNA, at, at, in order for the cells to divide. And I'm going to come back to this, because if you fool it and put some DNA in there, you can do click chemistry on and some nucleic acids, then you can label it. So, but watch, watch what happens when you... Um, Using computer animation based on molecular research, we are now able to see how DNA is actually copied in living cells. You are looking at an assembly line of amazing miniature biochemical machines that are pulling apart the DNA double helix and cranking out a copy of each strand. The DNA to be copied enters the production line from bottom left. The whirling blue molecular this is the... machine is called helicase. It spins the DNA as fast as a jet engine as it unwinds the double helix into two strands. One strand is copied continuously and can be seen spooling off to the right. Things are not so simple for the other strand because it must be copied backwards. It is drawn out repeatedly in loops and copied one section at a time. The end result is two new DNA molecules. Yeah, things are not so simple for this second strand. <clears throat> I shouldn't, Englishman, that's all he would say, but uh, I will say that it looks like a train crashing into an airplane to me. I don't know, it's just unbelievable, it shouldn't work. It, it's so fast when you think about all the false bounces that have to go on at the entry zone where they're putting in the, the nucleotide t phosphates <coughs> to make the, uh, make the bonds. Uh, it just it really gives you a pause. You, you can see why a blink is a lifetime down there. And not only that, it's down in the level where quantum effects can occur and we are up here and we're designed to work at keeping alive and, and jumping over rocks and making brave jumps to get away from a tiger and all these things that we do have little to do with participating down there, the machine that runs us. Uh, okay. So let me go to... I think, oh yeah, I want to show the, must be on the other slide, yeah. This is uh, uh, just from the web. Did you report your fine? What? Uh -huh. Is something wrong? No, I'm, I'm okay. I don't need the sound for this, but, okay, what is this thing? Well, this is a home experiment. It's on a warm surface. Uh, this is probably, it could be um, frozen honey, or it could be beeswax, or it could be just silicon oil with a little metal in it so you can see the, the convection cells. If you start warming, it's only about a degree and a half where this, this instability breaks out. And these are probably, uh, in that high plate, they're probably about 
uh, oh, a centimeter or two across, I guess. And they, you can see they're not totally perfect, but if this thing was, was with no edges and, and had a bit of a more homogeneous uh, makeup, it's pretty bent, it would form beautiful hexagons across the surface. And in the middle of the hexagon comes up the fluid, it goes across and comes down the outside, and, and they're pretty isolated. You put dyes in, they take a long, funny time to go across, and they go across the, in a very weird way. So this is, these are called, by some people, physics own organisms, because they start, before they reach that first dissipator stage, they're going along, just a little bit of energy is being leaked through the system by conduction, Kuwe uh, flow, and, uh, laminar flow and just conduction. But then it, you reach a certain point where a phase change occurs and it's just amazingly jumps. And it goes, what's really interesting about this, Brownian motion and things that are happening on, uh, at the prior moment are, uh, here it comes, you can see it, when it starts, it starts going abruptly. They didn't show the, the smooth they should have. That's what's on the surface of the sun. They're about the, half the size of the Earth. It's covered with these binard cells. You can see them. The clouds often have it. It's, it's the ideal close pack uh, on, a, on a plane. And of course, the bees have it in spades. And they also have a rhombohedral, dodecahedron, which is the best close pack structure when they're capped of anything we know in math or, 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 or four dimensions. And, and I, get, I shouldn't spend too much time on this, but what, the, what this is, is these have a structure that's very, very up there. It's part of life structure. It's what causes the cilia beat currents. And if they're ablated, we're usually the fetus dies. But the, at the beginning of embryogenesis, the current is part of the information. And if it's not there, the heart ends 50-50 chance of being right or left. A lot of other things go wrong because ontology is so in, locked into subtle things, and it's, it's the most interesting part of, of multicellular life, uh, uh, how it gets to where it's going. Uh, anyway, you start at 10 to the minus ninth, atom size, nanometer. You end up at centimeter size things. That you can see, see them now. So that's a metaphor for what we have to achieve between chemistry and life. And life is one of these systems very much like this because it's a dissipate. We're a dissipator. We take, especially us, we, big animals, we take in a lot of heat from food. We get, pass the heat through, and we're only alive while we're passing that energy through us. There's no, could be any other thing down here. It wouldn't have to be DNA, it could be some other uh, replicator. Uh, but the main point is that we have. Um, we're dissipating energy, the whole planet is doing this, and we're actually participating in a free energy capture that makes the Earth happy, it gets it stronger, it's in charge of everything, really, life. So, as a group, we're symbiotic, and everything right down to the cyanobacteria and up to the, uh, uh, the blue whales. Okay, now, so, and it happens emergently. There are many, sta uh, there are many forms of these, uh, subtle forms of the dissipators that emerge at the same level of energy dissipation, all different structures. And they go from there on to be different. They have a memory, just like, uh, just like, uh, they, they're not, you can, not reversible in time is what I'm trying to say. You get down to the level of tiniest things in, in, in the universe in physics, they're all uh, time reversible more or less in principle. But once you get up to a dissipator system, where you're, Entropy is dropping fast. You don't have that. Okay, I'm, that's something. That when I see it, I get I fell in love with this Bernard cells. Uh, it's not me who interprets them. Rod Swenson does. I have, I actually wanted to talk more after I heard yesterday's discussions about uh, about the how the what it takes to find things. How how to find something useful. And I guess the thing I'd like to just pass on. I have a. Uh, I have a lecture I've been working on over the years. I'll gladly p give it to you. You can put it up on your university website. It's a, how to find something useful. And it's really about the most important thing of all is living with uncertainty. You have to like risk, and you have to uh, 
not be uh, doing anything you know you can do. That's a waste of time. I mean, there's too many things. It's an infinite regress to the end of the universe to study peanut butter, for example. I mean, it doesn't really, it's just the way the world is at our scale. So I would say, try to work on something you don't understand, and then keep your eyes out like crazy for, for anomalies, but try to learn to tolerate risk. And you'll be happy because it'll keep you busy. Um, okay, I, so that, I'll, I'll pass that on to you as a movie. Now, this, this is an interesting, I think I'm gonna have to stick to these, because for a while I'll just stick to the things I know and can trust. Okay, this is a fancy piece of equipment, obviously. It's made in Germany, in Hamburg and Freiburg, I think there's a collaboration. And it's a laser that's focusing on an embryo. Now we're going from the side it's, uh, of molecules in DNA, which I'll show you back in a minute. We'll show DNA replicating and being followed by lab but labels. But this is DNA, this is not DNA, this is the whole shebang. This is, this, you know, this is actually in about 10,000 cells are formed in 26 hours, I think, from the moment of fertilization of the zebra fish uh, egg. It's a big yolk with a tiny little thing on top, and it, it, quick, it takes 100 minutes for it to get its 34 cells marched out to the, as far as they can, and then all hell breaks loose. And you're going to see the all hell breaks loose part here. But how do they do this? They track all those cells with a huge computer and a laser that's really gently fluxing through in every dimension and not killing the, uh, the things. Because when you, it's, yesterday, that question from Korea, Heisenberg's principle, uh, I'm not, you know, it's not that so many. There's so many things you can do with energy. Once you hit a system with enough energy, it can't take that. Life has to be within 100 degrees. It's a very small range, but thank God for water. If we ever lose our water, we're lost. We will, we'll have gone long before it's, at, it's gone. Uh, okay. So, is this going to go? Uh, even this doesn't want to go. Oh, well. It, it, it just goes, the, the sample's over here. And uh, it's, it goes up and down, and it's looking, it, it's looking at everything. But you know, it has to go fast enough to keep up, because they, they're moving the cells. It has to keep, it, it loses none of them. Maybe half a, a tenth of a percent of the count is, is, is untracked after a certain point. Let's hope the next one works. Oh, God, this thing's stuck. Okay, that's the problem. Okay. That's, now we have to go through some rigmaroles. Um, okay. Let's, let's see now. I want to find the zebrafish. I think I've got it on one of these lectures now, and I'll just have to find it, okay. Huh. Well, I can just open it here. This is number eight, I believe. There's one gigabyte. I got this in China two, a year ago from a man who's grateful I gave him my library um, of, of papers. And so he gives me this, but he came off the web from the, from the publication, the German publication. Uh, is it open? Yeah. Oh, here. Okay. This, if it works, we're gonna, you're going to see some fast gymnastics here. It, it, it's going to um, start, th this is the start point, and it, this, you have to imagine some giant uh, yolks here. 
The oak's probably this big. And this is looking down on the oak uh, from the top where the fertilization took place. And they've scattered. They're ready. They've already started to morph into different things. But they're run out to their gold posts, you know, and they're ready. And over here, you can see them from the side. Now, remember, this is going to be a picture that's pulling back in time because it's going to encompass the whole yoke in about 300 more minutes. It's starting at 100 minutes. Let's see if it stops again. And so they're pulling back constantly. It's growing as a cap over here from the side view. And this is, uh, and what's happening here, the cells are, this counts cells, this counts uh, nuclei, this counts motion. You see it goes through cycles and slows down. This counts chromatin. So they start out more or less in sync and they keep cutting and replicating at the same proximate pace. And, and now over here, you see what happened? It went up to 8,000, about six or 8,000, and then it starts down. That's, that really caught my eye. Because, you know, you make your, your body gets made as a fish a little bit, and then the webbing has to be taken out. They do their embryogenesis in, very, in one day. Now you can see the backbone coming in here. This is the head, the eyes. Uh, it's stretched. This is a stretched 747 here. Uh, uh, but some, the reason the screen is stretched too much, right? but I don't know if maybe I can change that. Let's see. I don't like that stretch. Oh, I don't see it. Oh, yeah. Oh, did I screw it up? <laughs> yeah. Okay, and there's something. Okay, now, you see that you can have this movies. I can give them the whole set to you. I, I just thought it was rather the most remarkable thing I'd ever seen. And, when I went, and I just thought it was like, Okay, now we have all this, all this maze of stuff going on in the cells. They're all differentiating. They're all getting instructions about who their neighbors are going to be or who they will accept as neighbors, and that's all ion channel business. And also the silly are beating around and doing various things. Um, so they all become part of the whole. I'm not going to do it. Oh, sorry. Uh, Okay, I'm stuck here. Now, this, this is another thing about the speed of things as far as man can keep track of what's happening in, in a body like ours. I think that's where we make mistakes. We're just picture-oriented static creatures. We're always looking at things sitting still. That's all we can really do. It. And then we have to extrapolate from there. Unfortunately, many people don't worry about extrapolating. It's easy to make mistakes. If all you have is visual, then you can't trust it. Our brain really warps our vision for its own benefit of survival. This is a PET scan by one of the... Uh, we did this with a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor made by Click Chemistry. And i uh, show you the... Maybe I... Well, maybe I won't. I think I have to go. Yeah. This is a half an hour time span, so you're seeing a slow motion. And what you're seeing here, it'll loop, it is the, a mouse that's been injected with an atomole or even less of F19, positron emitter. And so this is PET scan, and the, and the it's on the carbonic anhydrase inhibitor, which we optimized by click in C2, and it goes up to the kidneys, goes through the heart, lungs to the kidneys, and, and also it's going again now. And you notice this, this, this coming into view is the spleen. The spleen has carbonic anhydrase too. I mean, the blood does, but you can't see it until it, it's collected in one place. So this, the spleen would have been, uh, would have been visible it doesn't have any more blood in it, but you understand the labels coming in. Okay, this mouse had an inhibitor made the same way. It was a higher binder to the COX-2 inhibitor, which is a good... These are cancer targets. Outsides of cells have these kinds of 
recognition things on them, and if you can bind them, you can make a, a tumor probe with PET. Watch what happens now. This mouse was injected in tail, it went up through the heart, lung, and it, I think it was in less than a minute it appeared in the common bile duct, and not a bit of it went through the, into the mouse. The first pass in the liver. This was found out in two months by Hartmuth. He had a good looking drug. It was binding through the, uh, to the cells, killing COX synthesis, COX2. And, 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 but the little paws up here, the little tiny paws, they, they then uh, show, with a, they use a large cold dose to show that this compound doesn't leave any, uh, you know, doesn't ablate pain in the Paul uh, edema test. So it's gone. So it looks, this you can tell real fast if you have kind of visual, these things that we can understand, visual tests. Okay, now this is, a, I, I think I'm, we had an idea, MG and I had an idea, MG Finn, we both had it one day after reading Kevin Kelly's book and we all say he changed our lives because it was the day we realized that we should let the enzyme make the last step in an inhibitor synthesis. It makes the Cinderella fit, as it turns out. And I think the med chems make mistakes here. It's like being the ugly stepsisters trying to shoehorn things into a very delicate target, <laughs> the enzyme. It doesn't really make, it doesn't surprise me in, red, in hindsight that it doesn't work well. Um, oh. I just want to show the Amigos. We, we consider ourselves <laughs> clicking Amigos. Hartmuth has gone to Siemens, but Valeri, MG, and I are now the three Amigos. And <laughs> these guys, you know, uh, I think I better pull out. Okay, I'll stop here for a second. This is a, a C hair. Uh, I mean, uh, this is an enzyme from a C hair. This is a, this is a more mammalian version. The aplesia, the little C hairs that you can barely see, they're very delicate. They swim off of La Jolla, even where I live. Uh, at low tide, you can see them. It's a, the top part has been cut away, but it, it's floating around in the blood, not in the, on the lumen of the nerves, up as it is. It's the nicotinic receptor, it's all kinds of receptors. These are the receptors that make you feel good, bad, and they're, this is, nicotinic is of course the one that makes you love, us love smoking. So we take that thing off at the top, and these, this is moving slowly, but it's really, uh, uh, it's five subunits, they're all identical in this case, and those, those things opening, this is x-ray structures, it was Palmer Taylor's jewel in his crown because when it's all the way open, it has cobra venom toxin. And this, so it looks exactly like a starfish. It's huge arms coming out. And then when the smaller things are in there, like strict I mean, alkaloids, you, you get different positions. And so the agonist position is, is when, the, when it has a little tiny cat ion in there and closes on it. That's open channel. And it's, when you put the, uh, you, you more or less inhibit it variously as it goes out. The, the, this is very slow motion picture of that site. It has a conotine. I think it's, oh, I forget which alkaloid it is. It's a good binder. And you see, it closes, opens, closes. But it, it happy in the closed form. It, it's an agonist, antagonist. No, it's agonist. Okay, here comes another one. This one is amazing with these fellows at UCSD Palmer. We work with him. We couldn't possibly get pictures like this ourselves. Here you have the protein that you saw from the top in a stick figure. It'll have a water surface on it shortly. And this is the disulfide bridge in the flap. And it, it starts... Uh, it's a bit slow, but... You see now, you put the water surface. Now into that flap is going to come a nicotinic type compound. It's going to be a tropane thing we put an azide on. See, there's the azide, and it closes on it because it's got a quad salt. And now we fished for things in situ, and we got about 20 different things. 
And they're about peak, they went down to picomolar inhibitors. So it was an easy way to find, it's an easy way to find a, a good inhibitor. I so accidentally the other day found like it goes backwards and forwards, so I like it this way. Oh, it's, going, it's going back. So we're, we're, the idea is that it works. You can use molecular scale reaction vessels to go look for, uh, fi go fishing for things that might not be found otherwise. And that's what's interesting about this story. Well, Kevin Kelly's book, and he, it, he's out of control simply means you, ain't, you aren't anything if you're not out of control. You, if anything we're going to plan to do, you can bet it's not going to be very interesting or work because life is embedded so far back and she doesn't know what she's doing. That's why it works. And she only has to answer the live and die question. And so if you don't export control, you can't be a guide. In Sim Earth, Kelly was familiar with those Sim Earth, Sim City. You have to give the system. You have to realize you're working now with a system. The internet is same mysterious kind of system. It grew itself, and only by growing yourself can you be subtle and embedded and unpredictable. So we went fishing for things. We had about 98 chances, and these are the two that hit, and they were uh, stunningly successful. We couldn't figure out what happened for about a year. Finally, we enlisted Palmer because we found out he, we should have done that early. Here's the two binders. They, they're both good binders, micromolar and uh, uh, mid -micro, low na micromolar and uh, low nanomolar. So if you multiply those together, you know you, you should get a good inhibitor if it's well, well connected. And this one came out really good, 77 femtomolar. It has an off-life of about two and a half weeks. If you can, it's very hard to get the kinetics. It's the fusion control on rate and its off rate is all that matters. It was the most potent inhibitor known. In fact, after that, we made atomolar from this type system, and they were down to, they were, it became atomolar, and that's 26, 27 kegels, and so it just might as well be a bond. The thing that's really interesting about this system, though, is, is this. Here, I'll show you, the, there's the gorge. The gorge is 21 angstroms deep. Remember, this is the fastest enzyme uh, Esterase or uh, in, 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 in all organisms that have a central nervous system. It's convergent from different original forms, but they all have this big hole. And in the hole, in the wall at the top, are these polar, um, are these amino acids with aromatic quadrupoles. And the tryptophan, especially, it, if you take it out of this enzyme, this enzyme is dead. Uh, it doesn't work anymore. So it's clear that. That guy is doing something to grab the quad. But we found out by doing this in situ, we found out what it was doing, according to the experts. They think, uh, see, here it's stopped now, and I'll run it backwards by my hand. Right there is a, is a big tryptophan at the gorge mouth. This is an athidium, which you know, gives it every, Palmer had found that binding site. You can block the hole by just having an athidium, and it blocks the entrance. But it's not down at the bottom. The bottom is where the, uh, where the uh, drugs for Alzheimer's go and block the rate of hydrolysis of the transmitter. There's the active site where, where, where sarin and all the nerve gas things act. And uh, this is the creature with its syn triazole. It formed a syn. Next day, I, we, Larry told somebody, we told, talked to him, he said, well, we've got to have a way to make syn an anti, it appears. And so the next day, we discovered that QAC reaction. It's that simple. This, we, we decided, oh, we've got to have it, and we put copper in. Now, the fact that copper in and acetylene azide had never been countered before it was just hard to believe. In fact, I don't, I think it's still out there somewhere in the old German literature. Uh, if I go backwards on this, I'll just show you, uh, you see that, you see that, watch at the top of the slide, is that tryptophan coming in and out? It's about three, four kilocalories up the energy surface, according to McCammon, who's an excellent uh, uh, computational chemist that works with Palmer, UCSD. And but, so what, what happened here, because I'm showing you the crystal structure, when it's down at the bottom, that's the final point, that's the crystal structure. So the enzyme has been trapped up there. We call it a freeze frame inhibitor. 
and it's, uh, it's just a clunk, and that was where the catalysis to make an azide was. Of course, it didn't know it had that skill. Like everything that life finds, it doesn't really uh, register in any writing or anything. Um, so this was our uh, encouragement and started us off really thinking we could do this kind of thing, but it's not really a very practical method except for LCMS. You can do it automated in microchips, you don't, but you, got, you get a teeny little bit of product, but that's all you need. That's the clue about the Cinderella fit. And there's the gorge ripped open on the right, and the one on the left is not the sin, but it's the ante. It's still 300 femtomolar, so it binds damn well, but it doesn't open these, it doesn't pull the, the wall apart. Uh, see here, if I, yeah, take it out. This, this hole on the right, on the left, you, the, every x ray, and there are about 60, empty, full with various things, they always showed those two in the wall before. So you, it makes sense that this might be part of that 10,000 per second Vmax. So in, the conclusion from that was that we were lucky strict chemistry wasn't going to be just modular with a few good reactions. You know, the idea of a few good reactions and get function. It's the Marines, a few good guys, men and women, you can win. Okay. Now go to... Where? I, oh, I think I messed things up. What's that? Maybe I have to go back on the screen. Okay. Well, I have some on that. How to discover? How phobia-based discovery or fear-based discovery? Uh, over, uh, is, uh, have a reading list of things that I think are really good for a scientist to read. And, and, and Harry Crowder was right. I mean, I didn't start doing it myself really until I got the scripts as much as I should, but I read pretty soon I was reading 30% of my time outside of my own field, uh, but, uh, catalysis and synthesis and, that, and, and other things too, but it's technical things. You should never stay, even in in graduate, by the time you're in graduate school, you spend about 20 percent of your time reading other fields, because the progress in the world is going to really take it, uh, take us to the point where the disciplines are gone finally, and because they're really not useful anymore. Uh, you know, we, each person needs to know a few things, and one of the worst things I see in, in my experience is that the biochemists, the smartest ones especially, they have beautiful papers. I read them because they're wonderful to read, the logic and what they did and what they know and what they don't know, it comes out clearly, but there's not a molecule in there. The kind we make, the small ones, the cheap ones. That is like an ablation <laughs> between the two fields that is painful because if I can see molecules, I can tell some, oh, I've got a lot of things like that, made them 10 years ago, well, just take them and see what happens. And no, we can't do that, right? Next door, there could be this person, but if they don't have Take six months and learn how structures are put together and make that a requirement. You'll change the world. Because most of us want this biological function. We talk about other functions, but let's face it, especially the older people who have the money want the biological functions. But I, I, I don't think uh, there are other functions, too, that are marvelous that chemistry can do. We all know that from plastics and polymers. Now, I have some quotes from Emily Dickinson, which I, I, I won't bother you with, but I just wanted to point, oh, I guess I will, yeah. Emily Dickinson, my wife found her while we were writing these things about how you discover something new. And it, she, by, it, and the fact is that the, all the great inventors say failure is the most important thing. If you, have, if you aren't having failures pretty routinely, maybe, 95% of the time, you're, you're in a pretty dull area. You don't have any walls to, you, you know, you, you, you're not feeling the next mountain around you. You're just down on the plane. And so, anyway, Emily Dickinson, that was really, she was very shy, very creative, and very brave in her, head, in her, in her mind. And she was like, I think along with, uh, um, 
not Emerson, but Walt Whitman. She was the greatest 18th century poet in the end. She wasn't published during her lifetime. But, uh, and she, fa- she just, her poems are loaded with this right in your face, Mother Nature. Please show us. Dick, uh, Dickinson faces down the primal unknown in a fearless and uncanny way, as if saying, yes, we know you harbor big surprises, and we'd be thrilled to see them. And this is one of the, uh, knowing not when the dawn will, o- will come, I open every door. Jesus. I mean, that, and here's the one that's my favorite, because it's about energy dissipation, which is really what life is. You could look at it, but with this much of an energy gradient that's sustained, you know there's a life form, I think, on, this, on the planet if you look from away, far away. The pedigree of honey does not concern the bee. A clover, any time to him, is aristocracy. I took one draught of life. I'll tell you what I paid. Precisely an existence, the market price, they said. Yeah. You like that one? <laughs> uh, oops. Did I do? I, I, no, I'm okay. Uh, <laughs> sort of no sleep on account of PowerPoint. Nah. But, uh, uh, there's uh, the team in front of a blackboard. M.G. Finn. M.G. Finn started the bioconjugation. You should never forget that. People like Cravat and Schultz and others were almost publishing it before because M.G. is a wonderful mensch. He taught them all the students to publish it. And he's form, well, he, he and I take a long time to publish anything, me especially. It could be three years, unfortunately. And, and so anyway, Finn was the first to do the thing that leads to what's coming up, the labeling of, of DNA. So I have to hurry along and show you that. Uh, this was Falcon's discovery that it was, this reaction is unkillable. Uh, it just, uh, it, there are only about 6,000 triazoles in, 19, in, two, in, 19, oh, in 2000, say one even. And then suddenly, if you go into cabs, there's now uh, of this type, there's now three, uh, there's now probably almost 100,000, just because of, they're easy to make. And it was simultaneously discovered in Denmark on a solid phase by Meldahl, but uh, it, it, they said it should be anhydrous and it had to be on a solid phase. So Fulcan is the one, we knew it was a click reaction because all click reactions love water. The interface especially, they really want the interface. And that, that's important, that's a, like, sort of like life itself. It's life chemistry occurs between oil and water probably the most in, in enzymes often. And there's the trick that these two men, his student, Salak, Adrian, and Mitchison, they, they just cast this off. They did some more, but they just put it out as a method for watching DNA. This was the emergent thing I wanted to show you. And it, it came along that they would be able to label by feeding this little uridine, this little acetylenic analog, and it went in fine, and it didn't hurt the creatures. They could live for months and that carry that around and show what they were doing. And here is the, uh, I hope it works. Uh, this is a, he, these are HeLa cells on a confocal microscope. And from the woman who died, Henrietta Locks, in 1951 she died. So these are old by now. Uh, and I wonder what they really are because they're kind of worrisome about what they mean. If you, I mean, they've been around for a long time and they're still going. All right, so this is uh, the big, uh, every day they replicate. So one day, and, an, an hour pulse of EDU was given. And so bi- millions of these analogs went into the new cells. And the new cells are, knew everything, right? New, new insides and new uh, proteins. Oops. Hmm. Oh, yeah. So there, there it is cycling. It's about. It goes over in two seconds, but it's about it, nine minutes, and you can see nuclei really bright. In fact, there's only about half a percent labeled because these cells are almost as they were. They were fixed just before, have a few holes in them, so that the copper, which is flowing through the stage of them now, and the dye, which only lights up when it, when it clicks, it's quenched otherwise. So there's no background noise, and this people love. Now, why, uh, it works. Be- because this reaction is alien, and it, uh, you know, it doesn't care about anything that we care about, or, or any, even 
by life standards, it's, it's kind of an alien reaction that won't be hard to stop. It's the last reaction standing. Anyway, Salik then went forward and used it himself on a lot of cool things. I don't think all of this is published. He labeled DNA, and here it is at, at the metaphase where the cells are dividing. And this is labeled, this here means DAPI. DAPI is all the DNA is labeled. Over here, this was pulsed for one hour in its, in its S phase with uh, EDU. So you see it's only spotted, it's only labeled in, in patches where the part was being made while it went through. Then it's chased. The pulse chase is what they call this. And then if you look at the villi, the villi are sloughed every two or three days. That's why we get really sick. For their, we die from loss of our insides at the intestines. The intestines have to be rebuilt constantly. They're the interface getting the food and they get beat up. And so here comes the bottom is labeled on the first day and you see it down, all the, and then it starts coming up, and then it sloughs off. The, these are the cells that got labeled by the pulse. And this is a mouse, uh, the same mouse. He, he, did, he did a lot of ni nice experiments with one mouse. Just fed it, labeled everything that could be labeled, uh, that was making cells. That's what you can find this way. You find wherever a new cell has been made. Small intestine labeled with EDU, the pink one, which lights up pink in the screen here. You can see that, uh, that the villi, uh, and the blue is, is the rest of the DNA. Uh, so that's DAPI stain. This is the bad news for us who like to learn. I hope we can keep going. This is the brain of that mouse. There's not one new neuron made, and that's a nucleus of the neuron, because you, you see, that that's all, this is a, either a glial cell, which does divide, or else it's maybe just an artifact of, uh, in the cut. He pieced together thousands of his, his confocal things and made the picture of the centimeter and a half long, two centimeter long section of the intestine. And then he, he, he here he's, uh, got three T3 cells, uh, there, and he's labeled them with propargyl choline. Now, he's also got RNA labels. I don't know if I show them here, but the, the, the red color is the dye of propargyl choline, and actually, it's not that simple. Let me go to the next slide. It's, it's uh, what, what he's got here is that the green ones are biotin azide which has streptavidin along for the ride, so it's big. It can only reach things on the outside, the membranes on the outside, the phosphatidylcholine, and it gives the green, uh, the green uh, on, on the outside. And now inside, uh, you can get the little guys in, and, but also it's labeled on the inside, it's stained blue. Uh, you, can, uh, you can change the color of the dye in by the, the, the tricks you use in the, in the structure. There's the group as of, it scripts as of about a year ago, and it's changed, it's different now, but I don't have my her new hero, Jia Jia Dong from, from Shanghai here. And uh, uh, I don't know how that got in there. Anyway, th this is, uh, <laughs> I'm, okay, this is, this is now gonna be the, the other, labeling experiment. Now I show the phosphatidylcholine, and I'm sorry these got out of order, but it, it, it really lights up the phosphatidylcholine. So if you, it seems like you want to see things in a cell, with, even without labeling, of course, because it doesn't have to replicate to do this. Uh, lipids you know, sneak in and out all the time. And well, this is the part I loved about Valeri. All these things didn't matter to this reaction, so you didn't even need copper soluble. It made its own catalyst. These are ligands for the copper that really are perfect. So it, it, just the wire is enough, and you start at room temperature. But if you, then he went over and got 10 cc's of his own blood, a nurse he knew in the hospital right next door. He centrifuged it, and it works better in, in plasma. That's what you call strong inference. I'll give you that article if you want. You should read that. You should never enter a lab without strong inference. That's the way sometimes you feel, and in other days you don't feel like that. This guy reminds me of Jin Kwan, my, my colleague. He's so excited all the time. And, uh, 
Okay, now, now what is, what is, why did I take all that time to show you this for sale kit from this company? Well, it's one of those things that happens that suddenly emerges. You know, it, it's not anything I did, or, and maybe the Mitchison and Salik, I may not have even known exactly what it was going to do. But when you can watch DNA replicate, that means you see the turnover to a new, another day, and, and a life has made a closure on a new organism that's duplicated itself. That's the whole ball of wax right there. So that's the, and so what they're using it for, I collected a lot of papers, maybe a couple of thousand, but I've got about a thousand of them in this database. You're welcome to have them. Here, someone's studying the, uh, Araptus and Araptus root, and you can see, you can see just at the tip where the EDA is being incorporated. And I'll show you one more from this. And this was a one-page publication called Visions, the Art of, 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 uh, of Science. And it's one by, by Seibert, a uh, German uh, who's moved back, I think, to Germany. But it was Brown, his Italian postdoc. This is a, a Sidnarian. We're all directly related to Sidnarians. Whether you like, it's a, it looks weird, but they had everything. They even had the, the box genes. They were getting ready. They had muscles, nerves, box genes. They were going to do something. So they had to decide. And they decided sometime down the road there. Not cancer. This is a normal cell. It's been five days. It's a normal part of a big chain of jellyfish. And it's uh, making cells where it needs them. It's not a cancer situation. So, OK. Now, finally, I want to show you the. I, I collected hundreds of them, but I'm not going to have We just got way behind, obviously. So I, I just want to show you the, the papers program. I think I'm going to kind of get back to the. OK, let me see if this works. So this is the papers program for Mac. I think they got it for PC2. And I couldn't live without it, because I'll show you why. It, uh, you just dump PDFs into it, which if you have uh, uh, rights to get them from the journal, you can do it home through the VPN. And OK, now uh, it shows you, uh, let's put it by title. And you know, oh, it, it has searching, really fast spotlight searching. It, it searches every word in every paper, and it has all the metadata. And, uh, so if I search all, I search every word. If I search these, I get restrictions. Uh, let's see what we got here for Singapore, for example. There must be something from Singapore in here. And this is the way I find out who I want to talk to when I go to a place. Singapore, Singapore. Like in Vanderbilt. Before I came here, I was at Vanderbilt. They got a lot going on there. So let's see now, how much do you, I have to get smaller? Uh, yeah, so out of, I, this, I have about 10,000 papers that are click papers, but I gave up on that. It was hopeless. So I, I just go to the, the one thing I like is this emergent thing. And I also, now we've got the other projects. Don't look at the other titles in here. It's a secret I can't talk about yet, but no, it doesn't have any results. It's just the history of the chemistry. He, now if I go up here and put, what else should I put? China? China is going to be big, I think. They've got to publish a lot to survive. Young people. <laughs> oh, it can't be that big. No. What's wrong? So, okay, something's wrong. Uh, let's try. Um, uh, yeah, you know what's really impressive is the, is the Netherlands. Uh, I don't know if they call themselves the Netherlands or Holland. For a small country, they got a big operation in practical chemistry where they need to know what's happening at the molecular level. Uh, but now I'm going to go and look for a uh, uh, click. Now this, this is the way the, the trademark is written. And I'm not advertising this. I just think it's, it's easy, and I can show you how it works. And I, I need TM, so I go to one of these little things where I have my favorites. And where is it? there it is. That gets in there. And now, now, if I search for that, it should give me the in vitro and things. And, and you'll see there's about, I don't know if you, yeah, there's ha almost half of them are these kits. And it's it, mostly in EDU, for, but it's also for RNA. And, 
and they've got them for sugars and everything. And let, let's go look at the flags, because the flags I put in, uh, I'm just going to search for the ones that I flagged, because they're my favorite. And they, if you look at, or some of my favorites, you know, if you, I look at this, I'm a, I really don't, only interested in evolution ever since I was this big. And, and, and so I, you can see why, what, which ones I've got up front here. They're all embryo, they're all about that process that's really complicated. And if you look at, I, I'm almost done. Yeah, I, I just want to show them one of these. Where is it? C. elegans germ? No. Okay. Um, one. Oh, that's it. There's one here that... Earmuff? <laughs> oh, I think... But if, you'll see that by looking uh, at, at the... Um, at, at how you can see a whole backbone in the embryo because if you put the DNA in at the front of the notochord time, it, it, gets, it, keep, it goes all the way down to the end and it gets fainter, which is a sign of temporal elongation. The, the DNA is getting split every time it divides, but it's still there with the acetylene. So it's, it's a time, you can have a real time window to watch ontogenesis and, uh, and, and it's stem cells. Half of those references that show click it are for stem cells. They want to know where they go, and they can tell because they light up when you take the organ and look at it. Okay, thank you for your patience.